Greetings. Welcome to our newest stock message folder. Please feel free to post all the great information about this company that you can find. Thanks. Bogey. This is post number one for Amazon.com, now just Amazon, on the Motley Fool website. The company was founded by Jeff Bezos in 1995 to sell books over the internet and IPO'd to much fanfare in May of 1997, right as the tech bubble started to gain momentum. In the 23 years since this post, much has changed besides the company just dropping .com from its name. Amazon is one of the largest companies in the world, and Jeff Bezos' wealth is approaching that of Gilded Age giants like Carnegie and Rockefeller. Anyone who could have predicted this would also have had the ability to become wealthy themselves. So, who saw it first? Leaving aside Amazon Web Services, which wasn't founded until 2006, the early days of the Motley Fool message board show that it didn't actually take that long for someone to figure out Amazon's retail potential. First though, let's remember what we're working with. In their initial S1 filing made prior to their going public, Amazon describes their business by stating, Amazon.com is the leading online retailer of books. Since opening for business as, quote, Earth's biggest bookstore in July 1995, the Amazon.com bookstore has quickly become one of the most widely known, used, and cited commerce sites on the World Wide Web. Beyond the benefits of selection, purchasing books from Amazon.com is more convenient than shopping in a physical bookstore because online shopping can be done 24 hours a day and does not require a trip to a store. To put it in VC speak of 2020, Amazon.com was disrupting books. People took notice of this immediately. As then analyst and now super venture capitalist Daniel Reimer put it in his June 1997 research note, the online book market is expected to grow rapidly due to inherent advantages over the physical retails of vis-a-vis -vis price, selection, convenience, and customer service. The Motley Fool website, not the message board, joined Reimer and declared that Amazon is a buy in September of 1997. Although nearly their entire analysis focuses on books, they touch on their ability to use the platform to advertise and come within a hair's breadth from seeing the bigger picture. They begin with a quote from Bezos made to a publication called Upside Magazine saying, quote, maybe one of the things we can do is when you come in and if you search for books on kayaks, we'll show you the list of 225 books we have on kayaks, but we'll also show you an advertisement for a company that sells kayaks. And you can click on that and go to their website and buy a kayak. The Motley Fool then surmises, Amazon ends up selling not just books to his virtual community, it ends up selling advertising and ergo additional products, other people's products. Other people's products, yes, but what's to say that Amazon couldn't eventually take a cut of its hypothetical kayak dealer's sales? So at that point, the analysts like Amazon, but they're still not quite seeing what could happen if they take on the rest of retail. Out amongst the unwashed masses on the message board, the first poster to have a whiff of what's to come posts on November 1997. He suggests that maybe Amazon could start selling CDs. He's noticed that Borders, a bookstore that ultimately becomes one of Amazon's first true casualties when it declared bankruptcy in 2011, sells CDs. So, points on the one hand for thinking about product expansion, but he's clearly still viewing them as a bookstore. A month later, someone posts a quote from Bezos from the Nightly Business Report where he says, no, we certainly won't open up physical stores. We will expand into new product categories, and that mostly means things like music and videos. A poster replies that maybe Bezos stole that idea from the board. As the tech bubble continues to inflate, posting volume on the message board increases greatly and posting quality falls off a cliff. It becomes much more about where the stock price is going than why it would go there. Bulls call bears stupid, and bears call bulls stupid. 
During this time absent of prophetic postings, Amazon's future becomes a little bit clearer thanks to their own press releases. First, in April of 1998, the company announces the acquisition of the Internet Movie Database, better known as imdb.com. They expect this will, quote, support its eventual entry into online video sales. Then in June, they officially launch their music store. This makes them a two-product company with their eye on the third. And then one month later, for some reason, people begin to get it. First, it's a poster named Banduke DM. On a thread about a rumor that Borders is thinking about buying a stake in Amazon, he writes, Amazon's recent move into the music business indicates they want to be more than just another bookstore. Furthermore, I have to believe in the long run, it makes sense for Amazon to be an online retailer of just about everything, from books to golf clubs to software. I was able to find the person behind this post now no longer a student, but the president of a California real estate company, but unfortunately he didn't reply to my request for comment on whether he's been holding shares for the past 22 years. So as revenge, we're just going to say he sold during the dot-com crash and now he's too ashamed to talk about it. This is merely the opening act though. The gauntlet is laid down on July 22nd in a thread titled, Amazon isn't a bookseller by an Amazon bear calling out a poster for a specific quote made in a prior thread. His argument is thus, sorry, Dave, but what is Amazon if it isn't a bookseller? Last time I checked, they sold books and music through the internet mail order. Isn't that a bookseller? Poster Green Eggs kicks things off by brilliantly noting, quote, now I'm not going to guess about the next business line, but if they wanted to be the internet's leading seller of lobster, they probably could do it very easily. At this point, the company is only worth about a billion dollars, but this lobster comment is spot on. Also, it's possibly literally correct these days. Either way, that pithy remark serves as the appetizer for the malign Dave's response. Dave, to say the least, is not having it. He has seen the light. And three hours and 23 minutes after being called out, he replies. Amazon isn't just a bookseller, no. They sell a lot of books, yep, but they also sell music now. And if they're not already number one in the market share in that business, I think they are, they will be shortly. In addition to these things, they have amassed and continue to amass one of the more amazing lists of customer information available today. A list that is growing exponentially relative to most other businesses out there and is far more telling and complex. When they begin high margin targeted advertising, some people who think they're quote, just a bookseller will have their eyes open further, just as those people's eyes were opened when Amazon began selling music. That may not happen for a while, I have no idea when, but I know it will happen. When Amazon begins selling movies, that'll open eyes further. And when Amazon begins to move into higher margin items like software sales, one of the more plausible bear arguments will begin to disappear. Probably the profoundest thing to be written on this message board in recent memory was this simple line from Green X. Now, I'm not going to guess about the next business line, but if they wanted to be the internet's leading seller of lobster, they probably could do it very easily. There is only one company in the world about which somebody could make that statement, with the possible exception of a lobster company itself, and that is Amazon. It continues to amaze me how some people are blind to that reality. Listen, Amazon is now potentially threatening retailers in every business in the same way that Microsoft is threatening internet companies in every business. Not actively and directly, but potentially and likely. Those who fail to recognize these potentialities, and in some cases, these soon-to-be realities, those who reflexively train their sights backward and seem incapable of visualizing the future, will continue to be flabbergasted by this stock's valuation. Wow. Good work, Dave. Now, if only he could have spread that gospel so that everyone could have heard it and... Wait, what? 
Actually, we've already heard from Dave once in this story. Dave, poster, and real-life name David Gardner, is one of the three founders of The Motley Fool. Undoubtedly, he was one of the people behind Amazon being added to The Motley Fool portfolio in 1997. I began this research expecting to find some anonymous oracles from 20 years ago. I thought it would be fun wondering about whatever became of them. Instead, I hit on a public figure who not only had the platform to try and spread the word, but actively did so. He tried to tell us once, then he tried to tell us again. So the next time you see an ad that looks like this, just remember that some people actually do make those calls, and the man behind Motley Fool was one of them. Thanks for watching, guys.